Hey everyone, it's me, Bob, and welcome back to another episode of Bob Explains Better. Today, I thought it would be helpful, I've gotten a few requests for this over the past weeks, um, to talk about macros. And macros are something that I use in many different parts of my life. I use them at work, I use them personally, and the story of why and how I got into macros is something that I'll be covering in another episode, which is injuring my hands, um, developing uh, you know, a nerve injury, some, some hand pain, um, and really needing to find more creative ways to automate and do the things in my life that I did before. And uh, when you're someone who works a desk job, uh, if you're someone who uh, you know, has a construction job or something that uses your hands a lot, and all of your hobbies in your life, whether it's gaming or playing guitar or you know, doing things outside, even gardening, uh, the weeding motion, you find that uh, your hands will take a lot of abuse over time. And for someone like me that grew up with computers and, and computers just being a part of my DNA at this point, um, I, I was typing very fast from a young age as well. And so I, I type around 150 words a minute. I know that's uh, you know, for some of the people uh, out there, that's not very much, but um, for, for others, that's a lot, right? And that's a, a lot of stress on your hands. So what do macros do? They automate um, and record users' actions for playback at a later time. And uh, that automation can be explained in lots of really, really complicated and different ways. Uh, you know, I was just looking here at uh, a couple different definitions on Google and you know, a single instruction that expands automatically into a set of instructions to perform a particular task. But I think a much better, much easier explanation of that is just doing the things that you don't want to have to do anymore. And so um, as part of this video, I'm going to be exp explaining macros in an emulator. Uh, and, and recording macros in an emulator is very easy. This is for, uh, for gamers in specific, uh, but this applies in many different software packages. There's macros in Microsoft Excel, um, you know, uh, in many other different tools, and you can apply these same concepts of recording macros, kind of creating flows to many different parts of your life. So um, today we're going to be recording a macro in a program called Knox. Knox is a emulator. Uh, you can find it at bignox.com and it's used to emulate games on Android platforms. I happen to have an iPhone and one of the uh, favorite games that I like to play is not available on the iPhone. And so I downloaded Knox onto my computer. Um, I was really enjoying playing this game. I injured my hands and I was unable to play the same way I was before. So uh, in order to automate some of these daily tasks, um, I built some macros to help myself um, and continue to do something that I love. Now you might be doing this not because you have an injury, you might just want to save yourself some time. So let's get right into the video and I'll explain for everyone here um, exactly how you start with recording a macro. So um, while I'm kind of loading up uh, the game here, um, how do you access these kind of uh, programming features within Knox? First of all, you just click on this dot 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 and it pops out this menu. If you mouse over anything in pretty much any program, right, it tells you what these different things do. And this little mouse button looking thing is the macro recorder. And we're going to click on that and it pops up this window right here and you can see I have a number of pre-recorded macros. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying not every game, not every gaming company allows the use of macros. They look at it as cheats or exploits. And in the case of Idle Heroes especially, it's frowned upon because for a period of time, there were users who were just running 7 to 10 accounts and then selling those accounts after building them up to a certain level. So um, I'm not condoning that type of behavior. I'm simply presenting the functionality of Nox in this video with my favorite game. Um, I'm not saying that I even use these anymore for this game because as I'll explain in the video about my hands, I've been able to recover uh, you know, that, from that journey by doing a lot of different physical therapy. And I'll explain that physical therapy in that upcoming video. So how do we record a macro and what's, what's the, uh, what's the you know, best process of doing this? Um, first of all, I want everyone to relax because this is very, very simple um, and it's step by step. It records any action that you do. So just to demonstrate that, I'm going to click on record. Don't worry about making mistakes or anything. I'm just going to click a few times on the screen. I'm going to move left. I'm going to move right. Um, and you'll notice that up here in the top, I've got this timer and it's growing in time. You can pause. Um, and you can save or stop recording. For now, I'm just going to stop recording. And you can see here that it saved that macro as, you know, recording one essentially. 
and there's different things here that I can access. I can rename it by clicking on this button and just say this is my um, test demo or whatever, whatever you want to say. Um, and uh, you can also do a number of different uh, really other cool features here that do the programming language behind the scenes that if you were someone that knew Python or JavaScript and you were building this type of a, a bot, if you will, on your own, you would have to do that. So um, you could loop this command. You could loop it two times, three times, however many times you wanted to do, and we'll explain where that can be creative, uh, creatively applied, uh, excuse me, a little bit later in the video. Um, you can accelerate it. So let's say you recorded this at a very uh, slow and thoughtful pace. You could actually increase the speed uh, that it has been recorded at so that it, it goes faster. And I, I tend to do that because I like to think about what I'm doing and then accelerate it and also leave gaps so that I can kind of tune the macro if, for example, my internet is slower on one day. So that's an advantage. You can also have this run the second the emulator is start up, right? So if you know that you want to click on this game, that game is in the same position every time, you want it to open up, you want it to start this macro, move it into a certain position, um, you can do that and you can get very creative with the design uh, because even if you have a game that opens in a different position, right, um, Idle Heroes opens and maybe sometimes the, the dragon will be over here, maybe sometimes it'll be over here a little bit more and that's not consistent, you want to think about that when you're designing your macro. So for example, you could have the macro slide all the way over to the left and then move back a fixed distance and then line itself up, for example, where the horn is matched to the plus sign. This is an arbitrary um, location. You just want your macro to start from the same place every time or you want to set it to that place and then have your macro begin. Okay, so again, here is where you can uh, organize and customize some of the things that you've just recorded just for the sake of demonstrating it. This is that simple, um, you know, click, click, click. You can see the clicks being highlighted. It moves to the left, it moves to the right. I told it to loop um, two times, right? Uh, and <laughs> in fact, it clicked on the campaign there. Um, and you can see that it's trying to do those things. It's gonna try to do the same things, but now um, this is actually a great example because it's clicked on something as a sort of an error here uh, and uh, you know that that macro would not continue to loop as intended because it's now um, not operated as intended so okay so I figured the macro erroring out was a great place to pause reset and illustrate this concept again from the top now that macro in fact aired out because um, the loot button right hadn't populated any loot yet um, which is uh, you know which is why you didn't see that work you wouldn't typically run um, this one minute after the other unless for you know of course you were designing um, a loop that's intended to do that in something like a tower or an arena where you just want to hit over and over and over again, click on the same spot, complete, click on the same spot, complete. And that's where something like that on a loop and then going back into this menu and saying, yeah, loop this a hundred times. At the, it's the end of a season. I just want to use all my resources or something like this. That would be very valuable. And I do, um, as you can see, have something like you know, the tower loop and other things where um, if my hands are really killing me, I can take advantage of those clicks, um, sit here and watch in case the macro fails um, and, and sort of babysit the bot, if you will, um, but also give myself some room to do something else and to multitask. So that's, again, the value of the macro. So we're going to record here. Um, and again, uh, in this particular thing, you'd want to line up the campaign directly to the middle of the gold um, and that's sort of the arbitrary point that I've chosen for the start of this macro. I can click on get, I can click on back, I can click on arena, I can click on join, battle, attack, okay, battle, attack, Okay, and you would loop through this and again do this at a calm speed for yourself because you can always accelerate it in the menu later. And what I recommend is you learn the mechanics of anything you want to do to the point where you can do this just like the bot would every time and you can refine your macro to really be exactly what you want it to be. So I'm going to pause that recording there and again for the sake of illustration um, move this around right, go back to my middle position, which is exactly how I would start this macro, right, um, or you, for example, could move all the way to the left, pull it back precisely to exactly that position so it starts the exact same way every time, 
right? And then um, as you can see up here, I've got my recording number one, my recording number two. I'm gonna name this, you know, test two. And I'm just going to delete that just again to illustrate how that's done. And I'm gonna hit play. And what we should see here is that it opens campaign, it clicks get, it backs out, and it does the arena quests. Now, again, you can string all of this together. And there's one other feature that I'm gonna explain, which is combining macros. Because oftentimes, you get nervous when you're doing one of these things. You don't wanna make a mistake, especially if it's a long sequence. So it helps to do just one part of that sequence um, before moving on to all the other parts. And so um, that's exactly what I recommend is build one piece at a time, combine your flow, right? Just as you would if you were a computer programmer doing this with the raw script yourself, you're just taking advantage of this piece by piece construction um, summary that Knox allows you to do so easily and so intuitively. So as you can see, it just ran through there. It's saving my hands. It's a hands-free experience. Um, that's wonderful for me. I could be working um, on, on other stuff and, and not thinking about it. One more important concept to teach. So we talked about recording these in small bite-sized chunks. It reduces the likelihood of you making an error. It reduces the frustration if you've been recording for a long time and then you're unable to edit that. Um, and uh, now you can piece all these small pieces together that are error-free in a really easy and convenient way. So you do that by clicking on this combined play button, right? So that's right here next to record, combined play. And what we're gonna do is take these existing macros that we've built and again, we just did test two, but you would have constructed the rest of these pieces on your own. You click save. That combines into a new recording file. Um, as, as a person who's done a lot of programming, I like to combine that and say like C for combined Idle Heroes private server one. You can come up with any convention that works for you, that makes sense for you, um, but that is how you combine these smaller pieces of macros into one combined flow. So that's a quick demo for how to set up and record uh, macros in Knox. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you did, give me a comment, like the video, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing a lot of different topics, and, you know, welcome to Bob Explains Better. Thank you very much.